a lot to say. I just have one. Um, of course, I'll have to know where it's at <laughs> if you read it. Uh, let's see. Okay, if I don't find it, I'll just do my best. It tells us that um, and I can't even get it started now. <laughs> um, I'll do the, uh, I'll just do the best I can. Some men sins, they go before unto judgment. And that's why we could have a clean page. Mm. The other men sins, they follow after. And that's uh, what we don't want to happen. Right. When we get to judgment, oh Lord, can open the book and see a clean, a clean page there, and say, well, I don't see anything here. Or we could not take care of the business, and find out that those things are following us to condemn us. We don't want that to happen. And I'm glad that He paid the price and has taken care of that. So um, somewhere in I think. First or Second Timothy, <laughs> you'll find that. But <clears throat> I uh, have have been blessed uh, lately, and uh, you be in our house listening to some conversation sometimes that. Uh, have been really really interesting and out of some of that I'm gonna just speak here for a few minutes and uh, we'll be turning to the book of John chapter 12 And Jesus is um, going to talk about some some things here, uh, and I'm kind of just focusing in here to to see uh, maybe what what um, direction to come at this from. But, there's a point in scripture where the disciples came to Jesus, and this is not where we're at right now, so don't look for that. They said, uh, Lord, increase our faith. And when the, they asked that, the Lord t told them a parable of a mustard seed. And uh, it goes something like uh, the, the grain of mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. And yet when it is planted and grows up, it becomes a great, a great plant, a great, a great tree. And he uses that to illustrate uh, faith. I've, I, I've heard this, and pardon me if I've said this recently, uh, but I'll just say it again, it won't take too long. I don't believe that it was the size of the mustard seed that Jesus really cared about. Um, it wasn't that we can use a little faith to do great things. Uh, that may or may not be true, but I believe what he was really saying that is the mustard seed becomes what it becomes because God had the design for that end plant in mind when he put the DNA in the mustard seed. <clears throat> so the seed contains everything that that plant's ever going to be before it ever hits the dirt, before it ever swells and sprouts, before it ever shoots up, before it ever becomes a plant or bears fruit. What it is, is in it. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that to you tonight, and I, again, I know you probably heard this recently, but what you are is in you. 
Let's read uh, from the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. We will get back to John, okay? Uh, sometimes I just do it this way. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Kind of a short chapter, but it's a well-known chapter. And Diane was quoting from it tonight, I think, on the way in. And I'll start at verse 8. It says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. How many know that everything we do is just in part? Mm -hmm. That nobody here or walking the face of this earth right now that's going to have it all. Right. But the one that did have it all came and gave his all for us so that we together can have it all. This is some of the conversation that we have. That within the kingdom of God is all that Jesus is. We are his body. Okay, he is the head. Okay, so he says, I'm back to 13 of 1 Corinthians. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but that when that which is perfect has come, the word perfect, and I haven't actually checked this one out, but I'd be pretty sure that when you look it up, it doesn't mean perfect in the sense of everything being exactly right. Although with Jesus it is, but that perfection probably means completion. So he's saying we have parts and we have parts and we have parts, but when the complete is come, what does he say? When the perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away because all the parts come together and they become the perfect man. Look at Ephesians chapter four. And I'm just, I will get back to that verse. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, but I keep getting farther and farther away from it. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 and uh, I'm, I'm reading here at verse 7. It says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. See, the measurement means that we have a, a limited amount and it's measured out. Okay, so each person has a measure of the gift of Christ. If you read the book of John chapter 3, you'll find that the Spirit was given to Christ without any measure. So he's got it all, but we've got parts of it. And my part's different than Diane's part, and Bev's part's different than Tom's and Reggie's is different than Powell's, and my, you know, all of us have different parts. But he has all of it. Mm -hmm. And it talks about out of his fullness, we are given our part. Mm -hmm. So all that he is, is dealt out to his people. And then reading on, wherefore uh, is given the gift of Christ. So verse seven again. But unto every one of us is given the grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And I'm going to skip a few verses. You please read them in the meantime. When you get a chance, but down to verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Which one of those do you think Jesus was? All of them. He was all of them, but now he gives some to this person and some to that person. Uh, so we see kind of that working here. Why? Why give some these different functions? Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors. And teachers, verse 12, it is for the perfecting. Remember what perfection was? Mm -hmm. It's completion for the completing of the saints. To, uh, I'm, I'm just, I would want to, to say more, but I'll just read it because the scriptures say it better than I. For the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Everybody has a work. Everybody has a ministry. But your ministry in my ministry, have to work together. Nobody has a ministry by themselves. 
For the edifying, what? The edifying. The word edifying, edifying means to build up. To build up the body of Christ. Listen to 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son unto what? A perfect man. A complete man. Unto what? The measure of who? The stature. The height of Christ, of the fullness of Christ. Do you see this? Do you see what it's saying? It's saying these ministries are given so that everybody can be built up, so that when we add everybody up together, we come to the measure of the fullness of Christ. He is the fullness of God. In Him dwelt all the fullness, he tells us. So in him it's all, but in us it's part, but you join the parts and all of a sudden we have it all. Okay. Now, so to me, that can help me to have faith. Mm -hmm. I have faith because what I can do, I can do. But what I can't do, I can't do. Anybody ever beat yourself up for what you can't do? Mm -hmm. Hmm? You wish you could be a Billy Graham or something. <laughs> you wish you could be a uh, this person or that person. Well, you know what? Every one of those persons had their limitations too. Mm -hmm. And they, if they got to some pinnacle of success, they didn't get there by themselves. They had somebody else. Mm -hmm. Now, Tom says, going to breakfast? I go, yeah, I'll be there. He says, I'll be there. The next thing you know, we're there. But not only are we there, but somebody else is there. The next thing you know, there's something going on. I go, how did this happen? Well, it wasn't me. Yeah, I can't do it without him. Maybe he can't do it without me. I can't do it without Diane. Maybe she can't. Because we have to learn to work together. Okay, so, and what's the whole purpose of it? The purpose is so that the body can become Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not in a literal sense, but the attributes of our Savior should be within the, uh, the, the, the body of Christ. And that means that we're going to work together differently. I'm not going to do what you do, and you're not going to do what I do, but we're going to work together. Tom meets people, makes friends. I don't make friends. <coughs> but I can get with him. And when he introduces and he throws up this question, and I, I go, oh, I can answer that. Boo. Okay. Some tongue-in-cheek there. Okay. I, I have three friends, actually. So. <laughs> okay. Does that count your wife and mother? Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> that's, okay. that's not... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's go back to where we said we were going to start. John. John chapter 12. And so... Uh, we read in verse 23. And this is interesting to me, what Jesus says. Um, and, and, well, I'll read what he says. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Wow, he's going to be glorified. Now, immediately, if you're like me, you would think, wow, he's going to shine. He's going to do some great things. He's going to sit on the throne. He's going to have a crown. He's going to, light's going to emanate from him and power and thunder. He, you know, all of that stuff, that's our mentality. And maybe all of that's true. I'm not sure. But the next thing that he says doesn't seem like that. He says, verse 24, verily, verily, truly, truly. You hear one more? Amen, amen. Okay. I say unto you, now he's talking about being glorified here, mm -hmm. except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. 
But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Wait a minute. Where's the glory in that? <laughs> Jesus' concept of glory must be a little different than what we have. As he said, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it, it abides alone. You know, that's a pretty e easy illustration if we think about it. Corn of wheat, it's, it's the same as a corn of grain or a, a seed. Basically, it's a seed. Remember the mustard seed? What was it? It wasn't how big the mustard seed. It was what was inside the mustard mm -hmm. seed. And so Jesus is saying, except the seed fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. Mm -hmm. How long can a seed live? I guarantee a long time. You can go out into a granary someplace where seeds have been kept for years and decades and even hundreds of years, and you can find a little seed, guess what? Plant that puppy. Mm -hmm. It'll grow mm -hmm. because it's still living. What is it? It's that the seed can continue to live as long as you don't plant it. And they go, what? What happens to the seed? The seed can remain if it's just never put into the ground. But when it's put into the ground, what does it do? It starts absorbing moisture, and then it swells, and then it's absorbing more moisture, and the sun warms it, and it swells, and all of a sudden inside of this seed, things begin to happen. And they're happening just like God designed them to happen. First, there's a little thing that begins to form. It's called the cotyledon. I remember this from biology. <laughs> and there's monocots and dicots. And the monocots have the parallel veins and the dicots have web veins. And man, I remember a whole lot, don't I? Wow. Yeah, yeah. After all these years. But it's either it has one little leaf in that seed or it has two leaves. If it has one, it's a monocot. If it has two, it's a dicot. Most of the grain that we eat, or all the grain really, is are monocotyledons. So you've got rice and wheat and corn and oats and barley and all of that stuff. I'm just saying that. <clears throat> because it's what's on the inside of the seed that determines what the plant's going to be. Guess what? God did not start looking at that seed and saying, I'm going to make a seed. He started saying, well, this is the kind of plant I want. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I've got to put all that into a seed. Mm -hmm. We think in the opposite. We see the seed and then we go this way. God says, here it is. I'm going to put it in this. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. What do you think he sees in you? What does he see in you, Reggie? He sees something that he had in mind from way back when. And he said, but before you can become what I want you to be, i got to put all that stuff into a seed. I forgot to read the rest of that first Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we'll do that real quick because it goes right here. Okay. First Corinthians 13. <clears throat> For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, verse 10, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So our parts are going to be done away at some point when that which is perfect is come. Now, I'm not going to get into that entirely. Verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. He's saying, you've got to change the way you think. Mm -hmm. You used to think like a child. What's a child do? Sneeze. <laughs> a child is concerned about what the child wants. Mm -hmm. The mom and the dad are concerned about making that child, the needs of that child being met. So, the, so we put away childish things. Again, not going to go into that too much. 
verse 12. For now we see through a glass. And the word glass is not like a window. It's a mirror. How many has ever heard of a looking glass? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's probably from an other era when they might have not even been made out of glass. They were made out of polished steel or something or metal of some kind. And you look into that, and who do you see? Yourself. You see yourself. I'm thinking, mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> All that stuff. Okay, you're looking and you're seeing yourself. So get that image. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. And if you're looking in a mirror and it's one of those old kinds of mirrors, they're not that great quality. And so when Paul was writing that, he says, you, you don't really see a great reflection of yourself. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that'll preach, mm -hmm. as they say. We look at ourselves darkly through a mirror that doesn't reflect as much as it should or could. We're not getting an accurate depiction of something. It's called low self-esteem. Anybody ever have any of that to deal with? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's not the truth, all right? Don't believe that. That's not the truth. What the truth is, is what God intended when he said, I'm putting all of that into a seed. And you're the seed. But then, face to face. Now watch what it says. So I'm looking at this face of mine, and I'm not really seeing it very clearly, not very spiritually, that's the way it is. Now I know in part. I look at myself and I only see the part. Anybody ever, you got to be with me on this. You look at yourself and you say, I'm only part of what I should be, mm -hmm. right? I don't have all the gifts. I don't have all the talents. I don't have all the abilities. I'm not a teacher or I'm not, a, I'm not an evangelist or I'm not a, a prophet or I'm not, you know, all. we know we have a part, but we know we don't have some parts too. And so he says, now I know in part, but then, when? When perfection comes. Then, or when completion comes, then shall I know even as also I am known. Mm -hmm. I am going to see myself mm -hmm. as somebody already knows me. Oh my goodness, you got to get this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see me the way that he saw me. Mm -hmm. Or should I say the way he sees me. Mm -hmm. See, we see our imperfections. We see all of the faults and the failures and the things that we're not good at and the times that we struggle and go through life and wish we were better or different or something. And God said, don't do all of that. I see you the way that I made you. Guess what? I made you just like I want you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can't see it. Mm -hmm. You can't see it because your eyes do not see clearly the reflection in the mirror. But when that which is perfect has come, you're going to see it. I want to tell you something. When I get to that point, and I believe that what is perfect, when it comes, is going to be the Lord himself. He's going to put this whole thing together, and we're going to go, wow. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? Now the hour has come that it might be what? Glorified. Mm -hmm. There is no glory until the seed goes into the ground. Mm -hmm. There is no glory because the seed remains a seed. God didn't intend the seed to be a seed forever. He wants that seed to become what he saw in the beginning. And he wants you to become what he saw in the beginning. And he's trying to get our minds clear. He's trying to get our, our, our minds right and say, don't just look at what you are in your own eyes, but see what I see in you. Because mm -hmm. that's the design. Mm -hmm. And that's where it started. <laughs> yes, it is. And so what is that? When I become everything that he wants me to be, guess what? I am glorified. Wow. Wow. I am glorified. Because he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't create any one of us to end up not glorified. If you end up not glorified, that's not his fault. That's your fault. Sorry. But you can't blame him because the design is in you. Yeah. 
The design is there and it's up to you to decide, am I going to live after that design or am I going to just keep my seed alive? Ooh. See, the seed is who we are now. But there's a transformation that God wants to bring to us. And that transformation requires something of us. And I'm talking about being more than just born again. I'm talking about being transformed into the image of his dear son. The fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. And if I get my part transformed and you get your part transformed and we join hands together, guess what? We're going to be everything he wanted us to be. Now you want to talk about glory, hallelujah. That's what the church is destined to be. And sure, it's going to be that when he comes. But I believe he wants us to reach towards that even now. And become every bit of that that we possibly can now. Mm -hmm. And I need a drink of water now. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I'll just take it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground. Guess what? When that corn of wheat, or that, that seed, falls into the ground, the seed begins to deteriorate. The seed itself begins to die. Ooh, amen. <laughs> amen, amen. So Jesus, there, there's so much here right now. The faith that I now live, Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Because this is the deal. He did exactly what he wants you to do. He didn't say, go figure it out yourself. What he did say is this, watch what I do. And what I do, I want you to do. Amen. Amen. And so this is what he said he was going to do. He said, the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, and abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. The fruit is the glory. He, now, now he, that's the end of his parable. Pretty simple. You got you to gotta plant it. You got to let it rot. You got to let it decompose. You got to let it do all that nasty stuff so that that new thing that's in there begins to come forth and after a little bit it pokes its head up and begins to shoot up and it becomes everything I mean if it's if it's corn it's going to produce ears it's going to those ears are going to get full of little seeds and they're going to get ripe and they're going to be Oletha corn <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to buy it and we're going to eat it because it's good Hallelujah. It has too much sugar in it, but we don't care. Okay. So, so that, that seed's got to go through a process. And then he says this. He that loveth his life. You love being a seed? Go ahead, be a seed. But you're never going to come to anything. You're never going to reach your potential. And God's not about seeds remaining seeds. He's about seeds becoming great in the kingdom. That's what he said about the mustard seed. It would become great in the kingdom of God. Mm, dear Lord. Mm. And I feel that greatness right here. I feel mm. that greatness mm. right here. Mm -hmm. Saying there's greatness in the room. But where is it? Is it still in seed form? Or is it, is it taking on water in the dirt right now? Is it swelling? Has it rose up a little bit? I don't know. But there's greatness. How great? Is it, is it song, how great is our God? Mm -hmm. and, and it's not only that he's great, but he's making us great. Because he's already designed that into us. Why in the world would we want to go through life when greatness is designed in us, and all we ever want to do is be a stupid seed. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but I want to get every bit of the greatness of God out before he comes. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm struggling. I know you're struggling. None of us have it easy. None of us really got it all together. But whatever greatness is in there, and I know the greatness that I have is only a part, but it's going to fit real good with the part that you have. And we all got to answer that call. We've all got to hear that voice speaking to us. Do more, not so much in yourself, but do more in my spirit. Amen. Talk to me daily. Talk to me every day. Spend some time. Get on your knees when you come to worship. Clap your hands and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Do something, do something, do something. Don't just Amen. sit back and just let the seed remain the seed. I don't want this seed to be a seed. I want it to be what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Give it up. Give it up. Give up your life. Lay it down. Let God take a hold of it and let God do with it what he wants to do. If any man, verse 26, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. So the choice is yours. Do you want to be a servant? Mm -hmm. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Follow who? Where did he go? Well, he went to the cross. And where did he do, what did he do there? He died. Mm -hmm. Except a corn of wheat, fall right. to the ground and die. Mm -hmm. by the blow. If he hadn't have gone to the cross, we wouldn't be sitting here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he hadn't have done that, we wouldn't be able to come here and worship him in spirit and truth. Right. Where did he go? They took him off the cross. They buried him. Mm -hmm. They put him in the grave to follow me. Follow me, buried with him in baptism. Risen. What did he do? He didn't stay in no grave. Right. He didn't even have a grave of his own. Mm -hmm. When it's time to bury Jesus, he said, just give me a borrowed tomb for a right. couple of days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be in it, but I won't be in it very long. That's right. Hallelujah. And you say, I don't know if I like the process. Don't worry about the process. Process isn't going to last that long. But I promise you, after you die and after you're buried, when that resurrection comes, you're going to be glad you did the other two. Mm -hmm. You'll be happy you died on the cross. You're going to be happy you were buried. Amen. And when you come about that grave, you're going to find there's glory. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the glory. There's the glory. What did God have in mind for this son of God? What did he have in mind for Jesus to die and be buried forever and ever and ever? Mm -mm. You know, they have these stupid things about the tomb of Christ and the body that's in this. There ain't no body in no tomb of Christ. Right. I'll guarantee you that. You say, well, how do you know he was resurrected? I know he was resurrected because he resurrected me with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And I got into his tomb and I got resurrected with him. That's right. mm -hmm. yeah. I was buried with him. If you're planted together in the likeness of Christ, you'll be risen in his likeness as well. Romans chapter 6. Okay. Now he goes on. He says, Now is my soul troubled. And we were reading about our nation and the situation. Mm. And there was a troubling. Oh, my superior was troubled. Jesus said, now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Mm -mm. They're, about to, they're mm -hmm. about to bury the seed, he's saying. And, and, and I'm troubled about that. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. You won't want to do it. How many of you ever learned that you do things for God that you don't want to do sometimes? Yeah. There's resistance, isn't there? Mm -hmm. There's resistance from the spirit world. There's resistance from your flesh. Jesus said, what should I do? Should I ask that I be saved from this hour? And then he makes it say, but for this cause came I into this hour. Right. Hallelujah. So whatever lies ahead, I don't know. I'm not predicting anything. 
But whatever it is that lies ahead, you are brought to this hour. For this cause, you came into this hour. Mm -hmm. We're living in crazy times, but he got us here because we're the ones that are supposed to be here when they come down. And you better get that in your mind and not fear nothing. Amen. And not fear anything that's coming at you because this is the cause that he brought you to this hour. Amen. Not Martin Luther. Amen. Not John Calvin. Not John Smith. Not Oral Roberts. Not Billy Graham. Not none of those great men. None of those were brought to this hour. We are brought to this hour. And who knows who we are? Nobody. Yeah. And some of the stuff people do know about us, we don't want them to know anyway. <laughs> but here we are. For whatever reason. For whatever design. This is where we're at. And I said for whatever reason or whatever, whatever design. But there is a reason and there is a design. Because he's got it all in his hands. And he planned it from day one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You and I are here for a reason because God designed us to be here for a reason. Anybody that doesn't put their whole heart into this is not going to get everything that they can. And I kind of softened that up a little bit. <laughs> Lord, please forgive me if I didn't come hard like I was supposed to. Okay, we we want to put all of it into mm -hmm. all of all that we are. Mm -hmm. And so, where does this? I don't, I don't close the book. That means you know what it means. <laughs> I uh, I always close the book. That means just hope, because hope this finishes. This is about discipline. This is about doing the things that you don't want to do, or that are hard to do. This is the thing that says, all right, flesh, by the scruff of the neck, I'm going to take you to your prayer room and kneel you down. You're staying there. You're praying for a while because there's greatness in you. And the, the thing about it, Monty, is that we have to live into our greatness that is designed there in this thing called flesh. No other way to do it than live in the flesh. And I don't mean walk in the flesh. Right. I mean, in this body, you're, you're going to have to live it out. And that means changes. That means sacrifices. That means discipline. That means prayer. Dare I say some fasting. Opening the book saying things that you don't want to say, telling people things that they may not want to hear. Mm -hmm. But there's greatness in, in the room. Mm -hmm. And I just can't help but see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. What? <laughs> 11 apostles reached their world. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. don't, don't discount the numbers. Don't think that it's too small of a group to be effective. Right. Just let God, let God transform you into what he has in mind. Step number one, let the seed die. Let the seed die. I don't know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It's like he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, they are mine in the midst. There he's in the midst. Amen. Yeah. You know how much. I feel that, pal. I feel that coming from you, right from your spirit. Doop. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah.